Hi guys, this is Mrs. Logue and this video is called Interdependence and it is about adaptations. The Florida benchmark we are working on is SC5 L171. Compare and contrast adaptations displayed by animals and plants that enable them to survive in different environments such as life cycle variations, animal behaviors, and physical characteristics. And this is our scale we're working toward, being a level three or higher. Here's our learning goal. The students will be able to compare and contrast adaptations displayed by animals and plants that enable them to survive in different environments. Okay, habitats. The place where a living thing called, I'm sorry, the place where a living thing lives is called its habitat. Notice any words you see highlighted in pink, like the word habitat here, are going to be vocabulary words. All of the needs of a living thing must be met within its habitat. Because of this, only certain kinds of living things can live in certain habitats. For example, an animal that has gills for breathing underwater can't live in a dry habitat. A plant that needs very little water can't live in a wet habitat. Some example habitats are biomes, or biomes as they are called, are mountain, jungle, polar, ocean, desert, and grasslands. Warm-blooded animals, such as mammals and birds, are animals that are able to keep their body temperatures pretty constant, or the same no matter what the temperature of their environment is. Nearly all other animals are cold-blooded animals. This means their body cannot balance this heat exchange so accurately. Because of this, their body temperature tends to vary with the temperature of their environment. So when you changed into a dry shirt, you were adapting to the environment. In a way, we camper. I was just helping my body keep its temperature constant. Ah, a healthy 98.6. Ah, so humans are warm-blooded animals. Indeed. We are mammals of the highest order. But whether warm-blooded or cold-blooded, animals depend on either behavioral or physical adaptations, or both, to live in various temperatures. In very hot temperatures, animals must do what they can to keep their bodies cool. Behavioral adaptations can help them do this. Honeybees can withstand extreme heat inside the hive by creating their own evaporative cooler. They beat their wings to create a cool airflow. They also gather water from the outside and sprinkle it throughout the hive. As this water evaporates, it cools the hive. Physical adaptations also help to keep animals cool in a very hot climate. Some reptiles have the ability to change their skin color. This adjusts the amount of heat their body absorbs from the sun. Darker colors get warmer in the sun than lighter colors. In very cold temperatures, physical adaptations are helpful in keeping an animal warm. Sea lions and whales have thick layers of fat called blubber just below their skins. The blubber acts as an insulator against the cold, keeping the warmth inside and the cold outside. Wolves rely on the growth of a thicker coat of fur in the winter to help keep them warm. If the wolves didn't have thick winter coats, they would have to use more energy to keep warm. Behavioral adaptations are also important for an animal's survival in the colder climates. Some animals migrate, or roam, to survive a harsh winter. Through migration, animals travel to areas where food is more abundant and the weather is warmer. After the winter, the animals will then return to their original areas. Many types of whales, the monarch butterfly, and the Canadian goose all migrate during the year. Many animals will hide away in dens, caves, or nests and sleep during a heavy winter because there is usually not a lot of food. This sleep is called hibernation. 
During hibernation, the animal's heart rate and breathing slow down, so it needs less food energy to live. Squirrels, bears, and bats all hibernate during the winter months. Bees crowd closely together in the hive and keep warm by shivering. Shelter also protects animals from extreme outside temperatures. Some rabbits live in underground burrows. These burrows are cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. People think that dinosaurs died out rather suddenly about 65 million years ago because of the climate. It became very cold and the dinosaurs had no adaptations to survive those cold temperatures. Oh, yes, because many animals eat other animals. Those that are hunted, called prey, must have adaptations to protect themselves from the hunters, called predators. Hey, has anyone seen Chad? Oh, well, let's press on. Okay, so just a reminder, when you see that little microscope icon on the left, that means that is a piece of critical information and make sure you learn it. Okay, so a characteristic that helps a living thing survive is called an adaptation. Animals that survive better because of new characteristic are more likely to reproduce and pass that characteristic on to their young. So suppose an animal is born with a new characteristic. If this characteristic helps the animal survive, the animal is likely to reproduce and pass this on to its babies. As long as the animal's habitat doesn't change, young that have that characteristic are also likely to survive and reproduce. Over time, the adaptation becomes more common in the population. And in this way, populations of plants and animals become adapted to their habitats. Animals survive because each kind of animal has special features or characteristics that help them meet their needs in whatever environment they're in. These characteristics are called adaptations. An animal's adaptation may be a physical part of the animal. This is called physical or structural adaptation. A giraffe's long neck is an example of this kind of adaptation because it allows the animal to reach the leaves at the tops of trees. Or it may be a certain way an animal acts. This is called behavioral adaptation. Take our friend, the salmon. What's he doing? He's returning to where he was born. How does he know where to go? Well, that's called instinct. It's the special ability to know what to do to survive. Do they have to learn instinct? Nope. This is an ability with which they are born. The salmon's behavior has to do with its instinct to reproduce. But check out our little friend, the squirrel. His instinctual behavior has to do with meeting his need for food. Something you are all familiar with, I see. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll get back to that video momentarily. Okay, so this is just some pictures of some different animals around the world. So we have, um, for example, this is a desert area. Uh, we have camel who clearly has adaptations to help him survive there. He can actually close his nostrils to keep sand out of his nose. He's got extremely long eyelashes. Um, he's got the hump on his back, which um, does not store water. It actually stores fat to help him survive. Um, we have a giraffe with very long neck to reach the leaves. We have brightly colored animals over here in the jungle. 
Okay, uh, polar bear, uh, seal, they have, remember the polar bear and seal have blubber to help keep them warm. Okay, so physical adaptations. Physical adaptations are differences in the bodies of plants and animals. So if it is physical, literally something that has to do with the plant's body or the animal's body, anything to do with their body makes it a physical adaptation. Some adaptations protect living things from being eaten. For example, camouflage. Camouflage is a physical adaptation because again, it has to do with the body. It helps keep an animal hidden by allowing the animal to blend in to its background. Some animals have protective coloration to protect themselves from their enemies. The color, pattern, or shape of an animal helps it blend in with its environment to hide from predators. This blending into the environment is called camouflage. Some animals, like the octopus, are able to change color immediately to blend in with its surroundings. Here, he is light colored against the white coral, but turns dark when hiding in the shadows. Chameleons and flounders also do this. Then there are those animals who gradually change color to fit their surroundings. As the weather gradually changes the color of the environment, the Arctic hare does the same to blend in. Brown in summer and white as snow in winter. Camouflage can also be useful to a predator so that it can hide and wait for its prey. Alligators and tigers do this. Warning coloration is another form of protective coloration. Brightly colored insects, such as ladybugs and bumblebees, taste bad or stink. Predators know this from past experiences with those insects, so their coloring makes their predators leave them alone. Some animals have the same color or shape of another animal, or sometimes even a plant. This is known as mimicry. Mimicry is when one animal mimics or copies another animal, plant, or even a rock. There are some animals that have special body parts that protect them from predators. Shells or hard coverings protect animals such as clams and turtles. Strong legs are a body part that protects some animals from predators. Antelopes and gazelles' strong legs help them run away from the lions and cheetahs that want them for dinner. Some animals use various forms of shelter for protection from predators. Desert toads crawl down cracks in the mud. A cricket will hide under a large rock or under the loose bark of a tree. Since animals cannot live forever, they must reproduce and raise their young in order to keep their species in existence. All right, moving on, survival of the fittest. Bright coloring, as mentioned in the video, called warning coloration um, on an animal can be a warning to another animal that it is dangerous. Mimicry. Mimicry is a physical adaptation that makes some animals resemble each other. Animals that hunt have physical adaptations that help them catch food. When it comes to surviving color counts, take for example this little flatfish. Look at how well its colors match those of the sand it's resting on. The flatfish blends in so well it's almost invisible. Scientists call such blending camouflage, and it's an important adaptation when it comes to keeping our little buddy from ending up at some bigger fish's dinner. Now here's a little critter that benefits from what scientists call warning coloration, another kind of adaptation involving color. Our flashy friend here, poisonous foul-tasted frog from South America uses color to be seen rather than to hide. Such 
foam has bold markings and bright colors that warn birds and other woodsman predators to leave them alone. When it comes to our animal neighbors, you can tell lots about them by watching how they chew their food. That's because over the millions of years animals have roamed the earth, their teeth have adapted to the many different foods available to them. This prairie living pronghorn provides a fine example of this kind of adaptation. Pronghorns are herbivores or plant eaters are beautifully adapted to their grassy diet. Here, for example, is a pronghorn jaw I found. Look at these sharp-edged cutting teeth at the jaw's front. They're perfect for slicing through tough prairie grass. And here at the back are these broad, flat-topped teeth. They're ideal for grinding up a mouthful of grass before swallowing it. Together, these two specialized teeth help pronghorns to get plenty of nourishment from their grassland home. Now here's a badger. Like pronghorns, badgers live in grasslands. Unlike them, however, badgers are fierce carnivores or meat eaters. Prairie dogs other such small animals are their dinner of choice. And here's a badger's skull. Look at these large, dagger-like teeth. Badgers use them to grab and kill their prey. They then use these sharp side teeth to grind up their catch before swallowing it. Flesh-eating badgers and grass-eating frogs. Different as the two are, thanks largely to the specialized way the teeth have adapted, both can get the food they need in their grassland home. Along with physical adaptations, such as paddle-shaped swimming feet, bold eye-catching markings, and sharp grass-cutting teeth, animals' behavior can also adapt. Look, for example, at this school of fish on the go. These ever busy little fiddler crabs. This flock of hungry shorebirds. And these mighty buffalo. They all provide great examples of how animals' behavior, in this case herding together in a group, can adapt in ways that increase survival. Take our friends here. Together, their combined eyes, ears, and noses are always on the lookout for hungry bears, wolves, and other such dangers. Such group watchfulness increases the chance that the herd will notice any threat, and thus improves the odds that all its members will survive unharmed. Instinct is a behavioral adaptation, and it can come in pretty handy for some animals when it comes to feeding themselves. The squirrel gathers acorns and stores them, either in trees or in the ground. Bees storing honey in hives is also an instinct. Some behavioral adaptations are not instinctual and have to be learned for survival. Wolf pups have to be taught to hunt. Their parents teach them this. They also teach the pups to hunt in packs so they can work together to bring down larger animals. In order to survive, animals must have energy to grow, reproduce, and live. This energy comes from eating. Either physical or behavioral adaptation, or both, enable an animal to do this. One physical adaptation which is helpful in eating is teeth. Herbivores, which are planting animals, have incisors. Incisors are cutting teeth, 
that are in the front of the mouth and are used to bite off grass or leaves. Herbivores also have molars, which are flat grinding teeth that are used for chewing plant fibers. Cows, antelopes, and rabbits are examples of herbivores. Carnivores, or meat-eating animals, have canine teeth, which are sharp and pointed. The canine teeth are helpful in grabbing and tearing animal flesh. Lions and wolves are examples of carnivores. Omnivores are animals that eat both plants and animals. They have incisors, molars, and canines. Examples of omnivores would be bears, raccoons, and humans. Another physical adaptation that an animal has for eating is a beak. Raptors, or meat-eating birds, have sharp, curved beaks for grabbing and tearing flesh. Vultures and eagles are considered raptors. The seed-eating birds have strong, cone-shaped beaks that are used to crush seeds and nuts. Nectar-eating birds, like this hummingbird, have long, pointed beaks that help them reach the nectar deep inside the flowers. Okay, so not, do, not only do animals have adaptations, but plants do as well. Um, some plants have adaptations that help them spread their seeds. Some seeds are carried by the wind. If you've ever noticed a dandelion, that's the flower that when you blow on it, all the little seeds go everywhere and you make a wish. Those are dandelion seeds and they are made to be carried by the wind. Other seeds are inside berries once eaten. For example, a squirrel or bird eats some berries, then that um, animal moves to a new location, poops it out, and now you have um, seeds being moved to a new location by the help of animals. Carnivorous plants live in extreme habitats. From the hot desert to the swampy wetlands, carnivorous plants can be found hanging off rocky cliffs, living between rocks, or submerged in water. What these extreme environments have in common is that the soil is low in nutrients. Most plants absorb nitrogen from the soil through their roots, but carnivorous plants absorb nitrogen from the prey they trap. This adaptation allows them to live in places where other plants could not survive. The dewy pine is a carnivorous plant that has evolved to survive in the dry desert. So dewy pines are native to dry coastal areas of Spain and Portugal and a little bit in northern Africa. The big mystery about these plants is where they grow, there's no water all summer long. There's no, no fog even really. But somehow these plants, even in the hot, hot midday sun, will still be covered in dew, even though they have no access to water. Scientists have done the math as to how much evaporation would take place off a plant like this. And there really is no scientific way that would allow them to stay as dewy as they do with, without any water. Another carnivorous plant living in an extreme environment is the parrot pitcher plant. It lives in bogs and shallow rivers where it can lean flat into the water. It uses its submerged trap to catch small swimming prey. This is the parrot pitcher plant. You'll notice that it has little bulbous heads with a tiny little mouth right underneath. This is a very aquatic species. It grows right on the edges of seeps and lakes. Some of the pitchers will even jut down into the water. And this one catches, often catches little polywogs and minnows because underwater they'll swim into that little door and inside there's also downward pointing hairs that only allow them to go forward and not backward. This is one of the few carnivorous plants that actually eats vertebrates. Okay, so moving on to behavioral adaptations. The way living things act is called behavior. So behaviors that animals know how to do without being taught are called instincts. 
For example, when you were first born, you knew to cry when you were hungry. Um, no one had to teach you that. It's just an instinctual behavior that we have. Some animals are nocturnal. That means that they are active at night and they sleep during the day. The opposite of that is actually called diurnal, and that means you are active during the day and sleep at night. Migration. This occurs when animals move to different locations at certain times of the year, and it is a form of behavioral adaptation because it is something that the animal does. There are many examples of instinctual behaviors in animals. Some bears hibernate or become dormant in the winter. Many species of birds migrate from north to south and back again with the changing seasons. These instinctual behaviors are examples of adaptation. Adaptation is the process by which animals and plants become fitted to their environment. Every individual is different, and some individuals are better suited to their environments than others. If these better suited individuals produce more offspring than the less suited, their genes will spread through a larger and larger percentage of the population. This lizard blends in with its surroundings. This adaptation protects it from hungry predators. As a result, the well-camouflaged lizards are more likely to survive and produce offspring than those that stand out. Plants and animals also adapt to the temperature of their environment. Homeostasis is the ability to maintain stable internal conditions in an ever-changing environment. Animals and plants have adapted by developing many different methods of homeostasis. For example, these dolphins have extra layers of fat to keep them warm in cold water. This competitive swimmer does not, so he cannot function or survive in the cold waters where dolphins can. Behavioral research is a fascinating arena. Whether the behavior is the competitive dance of mating fowl or the aggression of hockey players at a championship playoff, you'll find that heredity, learning, and environment all work together. Behavior, though distinctive for each species, nevertheless has its parallels among species. In the continuation of life, we find distinctions and parallels among plants and animals. Nonetheless, each individual within each species is unique. Hibernation. This is a long period of inactivity that is kind of like sleeping. The way that animals act toward one another, for example, cats towards other cats, lions towards other lions, um, is called social behavior. Social behavior can include forms of communication. Behavioral adaptations. These are learned behaviors that help an animal to survive. Behavioral adaptations have to do with the actions of the animal, something that the animal is doing. That's what makes it behavioral. For example, in this picture, you see a chimpanzee. It is using a stick to get the termites out of the termite mound. It is an example of a behavioral adaptation because it's something the animal is doing, and it is learned, not instinct. Okay, life cycle adaptations. Living things go through stages of growth and development called life cycles. Life cycles are actually a type of adaptation. Some animals can adjust their life cycle to changes in their habitat. For example, in a very dry year, pregnant impala can wait up to a month until rain falls to give birth. This life cycle variation helps make sure that there is enough food and water for the young impalas to survive. Just a question to think about. What might be an advantage of nesting on beaches for sea turtles? Like why do sea turtles make their nests on a beach? Well, it's easier to hide eggs in sand than in the open ocean. And eggs are protected from ocean predators when they're buried. So let's go ahead and take a look at our learning goal. The students will be able to compare and contrast adaptations displayed by animals and plants that enable them to survive in different environments.